Good morning. Welcome to Summer Refresher 2021. My name is Enid and I'm here with Teresa, Laura, and Jennifer. And we will be talking about KYVL digital collections on a virtual shelf. We have several collections in KYVL of eBooks. Uh, we have the EBSCO eBook K through eight collection. We have Tumble Book Cloud, which is K through six. We have Teen Book Cloud, which is for middle and high. And with these three collections, there are no limitations on the number of users. So you could have a hundred kids reading the same book and it's not a problem. These also can be used with any device. So they can be read online and some can be downloaded. You can also link to magazines and make a shelf of digital magazine links. I do wanna mention that every KYVL member district has a unique ID for EBSCO. So the slides that we're gonna share later on the KYVL page won't have the actual links in for the books or the magazines. And you will need to create your own links outside of your district Wi-Fi. If you have any questions, you can certainly email kyvl at ky.gov. And this is just a sample slide that I've made of eBooks from the K through eight collection. And these are some social and emotional learning titles. So what I've done is taken the image of the book and placed the link behind it. And it will prompt you to log in typically. I'm having a little technical difficulty, but what I'm gonna do is show you how to do links from Tumble Book Library and Teen Book Cloud. Uh, those do not prompt you to log in. They are just direct links to the titles. So I'm going to go to the KYPL page. I'm going to go to 4K12 students in elementary and Tumble Book Library. And I want to do a page on emotions. So I'm going to Tumble Search here in the upper right hand corner. And I'm going to search by subject and emotions is one of the subjects. Click go. And then what I can do is right click on the book image and copy that. And I have a new slide here. And actually what I'm gonna quickly do is insert an image of a bookshelf. And I had already done a search. So here is my bookshelf and I'm gonna paste my book title. Resize it a little bit. And then, so we have, don't forget to come back. Um, there are unique book IDs for each title. So what I recommend you do is come up with your list first after you've done a search or if you're browsing the read-alongs or the eBooks or the graphic novels, and then you'll need to go to the index. And I'm gonna quickly scroll down. And here's don't forget to come back. And I'm gonna click on this book ID and here is the unique URL for that title. So I will copy this direct link and I will go to my slide with my bookshelf, with my image, and I've already inserted the link here, but if I need to redo it, I can paste down in the dialog box and click apply. And then that link is behind there. So let me just do another example. And this time I'm just gonna pull one out. 
a farmer in the Dell, just for example's sake. And I'm gonna copy this link. And we'll do this a little bit differently. And depending on how you work, um, I use Notepad a lot. So there's my link. I'm gonna copy the image, go to my slide, paste my book. And we don't want the link that comes with it uh, because that doesn't have the full info behind it. So let me resize this. And I'm gonna edit this and just to be sure, um, there's the new link and I'm gonna apply that. So it's a couple of steps. You can grab your image. Uh, you could do all your links into Notepad, but if you notice, it doesn't give you a title. Um, so I recommend doing them one at a time. It's just work, work out what works for you as far as the order of things. And then it's the same if I go to 4K12 students middle and choose teen book cloud, you can make your list of titles and maybe put that in notepad or Excel and then go to the index. And this book ID, you wanna grab the book ID and I might put that in notepad. Open the book. Copy the image, go to my slide. Resize it a little bit. Go to notepad, grab my link. and then do my link. So if you have questions about this particular piece, we do have uh, videos on YouTube on the Kentucky Virtual Library channel that cover getting that book ID. And then you can always email kyvl at ky.gov. Uh, I'm gonna turn this over to Laura and Teresa now, and they can show you some of the amazing things that they've done. So, at the beginning of the 2020-21 school year, um, I quickly realized that we were going to be in um, NTI probably for the long haul, the majority of the school year, uh, because uh, I'm an elementary librarian in uh, Jefferson County Public Schools, and that just looked like the way things were going. And so um, I got together with a, a group of librarians um, within my district and um, asked them if they were willing to help me curate a collection of books for our students um, from EBSCO. Um, I didn't even realize that EBSCO had such um, a wealth of resources in their K through eight collection until I attended um, a PD last summer um, Kentucky, from Kentucky Go Digital and I saw Jen um, present a collection she had curated for her students. And so I was inspired by that um, as a way to ensure that students had, my students had equ equitable access to reading materials uh, during NTI. So um, originally, Teresa and uh, Donna Johnson, who are fellow elementary librarians in Jefferson County, uh, we started out just thinking we would create a couple of bookshelves, you know, um, covering the main genres of fiction. And we quickly realized that there are so many wonderful resources available in the K through eight collection. And we, turns out, love to curate that our uh, project kind of grew and grew and grew. So you can see from our table of contents, um, each of these 
topics as a separate slide. And uh, Teresa had the brilliant idea to link the slides so you can actually jump to uh, what you are interested in, which I think is great for uh, students. We know they have a very short attention span um, and you can lose them um, by having numerous things that they have to click through. So, it, you know, let's say I have my gamers and they really wanted to um, check out the, the books on gaming. So they just click on that, that link. It takes them to that particular slide. Uh, they find a book that they're interested in reading. All they have to do is click on the cover, which brings up the, the permalink. Click on the permalink. Now, when they first uh, use this resource, they will have to put in the username and password for your school district. Um, I made a little tutorial video showing my students how to save this on their computers uh, so that they would only have to do this once. And then after that, they would just click log in. So during a session, if they click on multiple books, they would only have to do this uh, screen. They would only encounter the screen one time. But if they came back another day, they would encounter the screen again. So that's why I advised them and, and taught them how to save the username and password. And as Enid mentioned, each school district has their own unique username and passwords, which we have on our slides um, for our students, but we removed for this presentation. So um, Teresa will talk about this in a minute, but we purposely um, opened the book. And so it opens on the first page, but you can see, um, you can see the cover, they can flip through it. So not a whole lot of, of clicks for them. We really wanted to minimize the number of clicks that students would encounter or have to do um, to keep them engaged and hopefully encourage them to read. I'm gonna show you a couple of other things that we've created. So once we created this collection of eBooks, um, we wanted to reach even more students because this is more geared towards our intermediate students. And we know that, um, you know, the littles need something too. And Teresa is really gonna share more of that one, but there's a K through two collection that she created and, and I helped curate some on that. Also, once teachers in my building um, saw the resources that we had created for students, they started asking for resources to help them teach virtually. So um, here's one that I created for uh, kindergarten teachers on community helpers. And all of these books are available through KYVL. They were thrilled with this. So it really helped me still be um, collaborating with, with um, teachers in the building and really be part of um, teaching and learning like I would be during a normal school year. And I was really fortunate to be able to function as a, a true librarian during NTI. So you just click on the book cover and it takes you to the first page. And so um, teachers were able to you know, share this with their students virtually and they would do read alouds just like they would do um, if they were in the classroom together. Here's another um, collection I created. Uh, I had one particular kindergarten um, teacher ask me for some um, books on math concepts and look how many math books there are in the K through eight EBSCO collection. I was just amazed at the variety of books that are available from EBSCO. Um, there really are just so many um, books that teachers can use to help uh, teach and reinforce concepts. Lots of high interest titles. Um, drawing books are something that's very popular in my school. We have the traditional genres. 
I love that they have lots of graphic novels, really helps um, entice our reluctant readers. I'm always amazed at how many of our students are um, want really scary titles and ask for those. So there's joke books, we have mysteries, just a great variety here. Myths and legends. So you see it, you know, covers some of the content as well. The naturalist genre um, slide we created um, based on a, um, a reading interest survey that we gave our, our students. Uh, and one of the um, personalities was a naturalist. They, they really like nature. Um, and so that slide is particularly for those students who found themselves in, in that, leaning towards that particular genre. But there's origami. Um, we did do a one picture book slide in here, and then we realized that we were really kind of shortchanging our younger students. So that's why there's a whole separate K through two collection now, but here's realistic fiction. This is the one I wanted to show you. They have all the Diary of Wimpy Kid books. I, like what? Amazing. Um, so I was really impressed um, with the K through eight um, collection from EBSCO, and I wanted to find a way to share this with my students. And, um, but I knew that if I just left them to their own devices and said, hey, here's this great resource, search this and look for books you want to read, that that was probably not going to happen. Um, because let's be honest, uh, you know, TikTok and other social media uh, sites are a whole lot easier to access for them. Um, so I, I've got to compete with that. So our, our goal was to, uh, minimize the number of clicks as much as possible, uh, create a resource that was visually appealing to them uh, and something that would encourage them to read because we were, you know, competing with all the distractions at home. So um, I got a lot of positive feedback from families about this resource and this is something that I can that I plan to continue to use in the future even though we'll be back in person and hopefully never have to do <laughs> virtual learning again but I'm, I'm glad that I was forced to um, explore this resource because I just feel like my students have access to um, just an abundance of, of digital resources that I just had never taken time to learn about and explore. So it's really exciting. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Teresa so that she can show you kind of the, the technical side of how we uh, created and, and curated these resources. Okay, thank you, Laura. Laura did the um, more of the why we did what we did. And I was so excited when she came to me to go over this, res um, this project and make this resource. Um, I found out that I am I'm a curating junkie. I absolutely love it. And I found myself just curating all kinds of things. Um, I'm going to share with you the kindergarten second grade, um, or I, you can even call it just um, primary, or you could name it something so that even your older kids can use this resource because I have found that my older kids will come here to look at some of the things too. So I didn't want to limit it to kindergarten through second grade, but that's where our intentions were when we made it. Um, on this one, I tried to make it a little easier for the kids to move around. Um, it's a very large collection. There are like 50 slides. So in order to go back and forth quickly, it, there's these little icons that I put on each page. So when they want to come back to the table of contents, if they just click that little icon that's on the page, it'll bring them back to the table of contents and then they can go somewhere else. So that's just one way where they don't have to flip through um, all 50 slides to see where they would like to go next. Um, another thing is that we created these slides in um, Google. So we use Google Slides, but um, Jennifer is going to talk with you about other ways that you can also curate and make these um, resources available to your students if you don't want to use Google Slides. So here are the table of contents for this um, ebook collection. Uh, I 
decided to break them down more like Dewey type topics, um, animals, things that go science, fantasy. And each one of these you can click on will take you to a slide of books, um, social science, holidays and crafts. And this is about the time that we stopped. And I was like, Laura, I was fortunate to be able to be a librarian during NTI. And I also had my clerk who could help me and I would give her a page and she would go off and she could curate it as well. So if you have a clerk that is available to help you with these, that can two people doing the work can get it done a lot faster. Um, so these look more like book displays than shelves. We just chose different backgrounds, tried to make it appealing. So we have things like big cats and birds and butterflies cats. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we went about putting the books on the slides. So the first thing I would do is I found a book about cats that hasn't been put on this page yet. So I'm going to log in to my database. And I'm going to go to the Explorer for elementary schools. Okay, and I'm just going to put in kittens and do a search. And then I'm going to show you how I narrowed the search down just to get books because there are other things that you could also use. Um, we just want to look at ebooks. So over here on the left hand side, you can limit your searches um, to publication dates and different things. But go down here to the bottom of source types and the source types for ebooks is what I want. So I'm going to click that and it's going to just show me those 34 ebooks. And here you can see now it's only showing me the ebooks that have to do with kittens. So I found one that is not on my slide. So I'm just going to click here. It's going to open up. And this is where I'm going to get all of my links. Okay, first I'm going to click over here to the left and you're going to go to PDF full text. Okay. I'm going to click on that because when we get the link, we want to make sure it has the whole book, not just to this page. Okay, so the first thing I did was I come over here to the cover and I just did a right click and I copied the image. And then I went to my bookcase and just pasted it on. It's similar to what Nina did. And then just resizing it using the corner. I'm going to place it down here. And now that I have the book where I want it, I'm going to go get the link. So I'm going to click insert link and that's where I'm going to paste it. So I'm going back over to my book. Okay. And what you're going to get for the permalink is right here at the top. So you click on permalink and here it is. So I'm just going to highlight it all. I'm going to right click and copy. I'm going to go back to my book and I'm just going to paste it and apply. And so when I go and click on my book now, it'll take me straight there to the cover. And that's all that you have to do to get the book to have a link so the kids can look into it. I'm going to go back here to our databases. And I just wanted to show you a couple of more things that we did. Um, and I'll show you how to put in one more link. This is dinosaurs and we have dogs. We also found some um, nonfiction books, but the majority of this collection, uh, a lot of the things are, are nonfiction. So there may be fiction titles, but nonfiction is the bulk of this collection here. here. Frogs, and there's some fiction down here as well. Horses pets and rabbits. So I'm going to go and do one more book for you. I'm going to show you how to put in a book for rabbits. So I'm going to go back and search. Okay, so now I'm going to get a book on rabbits. And again, I'm, I'm just going to grab a rabbit book. It might be on there already, but to make it a little faster, I'm just going to pick this book here. So you click on the title, you're going to click on the full text. It might say EPUB, 
or most of them that I found say PDF full text. And so you click on that to get your link and your cover picture. Okay, so right click on the cover, copy the image, go to your bookshelf, right click and paste. That book's already there, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it on here for you. Alrighty, go back to my book and get my permalink. The permalink is here at the top. I just click it once and then right click copy and that's only three clicks to get that um, permalink. And then when I click here and then I can just paste it. And hit apply. And so that's how you go about putting in the book covers. We had a lot of fun making these collections. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to um, any of us. We'd be glad to help you um, curate your own shelves for your students. And like I said, this bookshelf can be for any grade level. I think the topics are high interest. There are a lot of them, but it's just geared mainly towards our younger students. So the reading levels for this collection are younger. And there's a really nice one for nursery rhymes. Um, I was, like Laura, very impressed with the amount of books that KYVL had available in their um, EBSCO collection. I wasn't one that used KYVL as much prior to NTI because I had ebooks in my collection and it wasn't something that I needed at the time. But when NTI came and I realized um, this wonderful resource that was out there, I just could not stop curating bookshelves and I can't wait to continue to use them in the fall when we come back to school because this is something something that we will continue to use even more of as we go back to school, staying with our digital and having one-to-one -one in our district, our kids will be able to have access to a lot more materials than they did in the past. So I'm excited for this collection and all of the opportunities it brings to our students. And I'm gonna turn it over to Jen so she can talk with you about magazines and some other ways to curate the collections. Thank you so much, Teresa. Um, before I start, Enid, I wanted to just speak to, we're talking a lot about permalinks and I think any librarian, when you see those amazing slide decks that um, Laura and Teresa showed us, want copies of that kind of stuff. And I'm not sure if Laura and Teresa are sharing copies, but can you speak to, like we know for the tumble book stuff, those permalinks are the same for all of us. And you could copy somebody's slides that had tumble book um, permalinks in them, but what about um, like just EBSCO books? Are those specific to your school? In theory, somebody could use the link for JCPS, but the statistics will go to JCPS. So it would definitely be best practice to grab your own permalinks. Absolutely, yes. Just wanted to clarify that because I yeah. know I just get really excited when I see all those slides. It, <laughs> yeah, <together. laughs> it is okay. a lot of work to to put the links back in for sure. Um, but for statistics purposes, even though somebody would be logging in with their district ID and password to our authentication server, mm -hmm. it doesn't pass that to the vendor. OK, I got so it. So the link is the key. And that's that's where the, the usage stats come from. Well, good to know. I feel like I just keep learning more and more as I dig into KYBL. OK, I am a K-12 librarian at Eminence, which is a tiny little school uh, north of Louisville. And um, I wanted to talk a little bit about making magazines accessible. And this is something I started doing when I worked with James Allen. And this he really did this. So I don't want to pretend that I did. But um, I'm going to be showing you lots of examples from our library website. And uh, we lean really heavily on one single website that holds all the stuff we curate and do things for kids. So um, this is a middle school magazine section uh, for them. And it's going to look really familiar, like in the same manner that everybody else has um, been showing in terms of you get like a cover shot and then you link that. And that's where that's done. Um, this is the difference here between this and other ones is this is done within Google slide sites instead of a slideshow. So that's one way to curate that looks a little different. And before I show you the specifics of how to do that with um, Masterfile Premiere, I did 
like this is a web page that I made just for a uh, second grade classroom. They were doing a little animal research and one teacher, I, I find that I do that a lot where they just need a, f a handful of stuff there. And maybe just like they wanted, they wanted to have the link to Kittle right there. So they, for kids who wanted to go outside, these links are already where the animal search has done. And so it takes you to like the animal, um, like where there's, it's a landing page to go off of based on what they want. Same with Britannica, it's already, I've run the animal search. And so you can tell it's just they're browsing by animal at that, that kind. And so I do a lot of that um, all within a Google site a lot. And you can also, these are from KYVL as well. And they're just embedded PDFs that already exist that I took from EBSCO and embedded right in the site too. So based on things that that teacher wanted. So when I am looking, I already forget, we were talking magazines. So these are, um, what, the, what these links do is they take you right to, um, in EBSCO, a, just a general search of that entire periodical. So there is that magazine. So you're just landing kids here and it's still not ideal, but a lot of times once they realize when I show them, when I show middle schoolers this at the beginning of the year, I show them, they go from this page to this, and then I have them do a quick swap to look at their newest stuff. And I'm like, this is literally just a list of the newest articles from this magazine here. So like this is, if you pick this up and I direct them to the PDFs and um, the, I have, teachers are excited about that too. Sometimes when you want, there's just always, reasons why you'd want articles instead of full-length books sometimes when you're encouraging reading. So um, I did want to show you how, how we did that. And so once you are in Master File Premier, that is the database we're using from KYVL. And once you get there, like I just, um, let me back up one. When you go into Master File, I just would do a search generally for that um, publication I'm looking for, like that was Girls Life, I think. And when you do that search, you just find um, an article from the periodical that you wanna grab. And once you click on that source, then I always click on this full text link first to them. And once you're at this landing page, like then it does the, I never know how to word that exactly to get the full text articles from that journal, but that's what that, it runs that search for you. And then you go over to share and you grab this permalink here. And that's where I'm grabbing my stuff too. So when you look over here, that's what this slide is showing. You grab the, once you're looking at the details for a specific periodical, you do the full text you click share and then you grab the permalink right here. And I just wanted to talk for a moment about why I like curating on a website. And um, let's see if I left some of this up. This is one page um, I really like embedding. And I, you're gonna hear me say that for the next few slides. Like I have a genially presentation just embedded on this web page that my kids, like my kids all have this on their computer, elementary through high school. They have the EdHub Hub bookmarked there and it's they're pretty good at navigating within it. And sometimes like it's easier for me to add page for pages for specific class, classes or whatever. This is a slide, um, a genially presentation I did. And so you can see the interactivity that is there with these, these are all books. They come from different places. So they're not all EBSCO eBooks. They also, some link to my catalog there in the library. Like here, I have a link to reserve it here or use, um, there's an ebook and an audiobook there in our library too. So I really like being able to mix the sources of where I'm going to get like the best curation of um, what's there. But you also like, I use Google Sides too. And this is something my friend Felisa White um, 
made for Black History Month this year. And this is just her Google slide that I, um, she shared it with me and then I just changed my links and stuff, but that's all this is. And so it's all here. They haven't left my library webpage. And so I guess what my, what I really like about that is I found, especially with littles and also with bigs, they get lost with too many links. Like the, the more they have to go out and search or go find, um, I don't know when there's, so I've tried to make just within the library, there's one landing spot and I try to keep it as few links as possible within, which means that I embed a lot um, on my homepage. And um, obviously the other thing that we've been, we keep harping on that is permalinks. Permalinks make, make things so much easier because um, we're not making the kids run the searches. Like you've done that little bit and um, the scary part of EBSCO can kind of be circumvented a lot for them. So this is just a picture of my website and how I have presentations embedded there for just like bookshelves. Um, and we use these collections that we make a lot um, for digital signage as well. So once you make that and you have that, I also have that, um, I have these slides posted um, up on screens or projected on walls in the library so kids can see the books that we have that are new. And I really like doing that. Um, we've already covered the Teen Book Cloud, permalinks, but um, I wanna move now specifically to Genially, which is just a, well, it's presentation software. It's also, uh, it does a lot you can do you have a lot with it, but um, what I'm going to show is mainly just presentations. So kind of like an upgraded slides that does, a, it's a little fancier, a few more bells and whistles. I really enjoy the interactive elements that are easy to make a part of that. So an example of me using Genial, oh, I already showed you this one, but I can show you a little deeper here. Um, this one you can add, like if you notice, I put the book summary here and links to different ways that kids can get it. Um, I also. I read for Wired Robot and loved it. It's kind of reminded me of Swift Family Robinson and except there's a robot. If you have a good sense of humor, you find it funny, but it's adventurous too. Be careful. It's kind of sad at the end, but even though I hate sad things, I still was glad I read it. Plus there's a sequel and he returns. <laughs> All right, see, like what? That's adorable, right? You can get little kids to do your book talks for you and it's all right there. You're seeing little animations and I've probably gone too much, like all the wiggling and stuff and the pop-ups. You don't have to have pop-ups, but that's just um, how I decided. I just wanted to try it. Um, this is my version of a Bitmoji library bin. And I, I just really love, like this is, I can tell from the way this is linked, this is a teen book cloud, but um, that one is too. And that goes to, I'm trying to see what different ones are. Oh yeah, and some I just did for the paper books in my library, like, cause I thought, oh, if they're looking and they're in the genre, maybe they'd like to see this too. And so that is how, what I mean by embedding, like they still have never left, like they're right back here at our, the, just the regular library page, but everything is within here. And I, I like, I'm just a big fan of that. Like I have a million different, um, and that might be something you wanna consider doing if you haven't developed your school library page very much yet, because you can take all those slides, slideshows and stuff and embed them within there in Google sites so that they're just easier and more accessible. Let's see, um, since we're talking about curation, um, I also, I love doing it too. I'm with Teresa here. I just wanted to show you and make you think about um, as I've, worked on this website, different teachers see what is happening and see that it's getting used and it's where kids go. And so like my project lead the way teacher said, hey, I have these kids building video games. Could we put like, is there a way to have the library hold those games? And so 
So this is, for a while we had it like on the running banner up here the first week and we put their games on little um, handheld game controllers they could come check out at the library too. But this is where I think most kids just came here to play each other's games. So we're here on the library website and this is a genially presentation that's just white so it doesn't even look like I have anything. Like you can barely tell it's embedded there. But um, you don't have to leave the web page at all. I'm in the web page, but I'm still interacting with these different games that kids built. So the way I did this is on the click, the box comes up with the student written little summary of what it is. And then the click of the play button takes you to their game. And um, I just feel like when we um, start really, I feel strongly that um, like something like Google Sites has the potential for such power for a library to do our own curate, curation at a school level for um, student creative things too. It just gets me really excited when I think about it. But I believe that is all I have for you here. There's links here at the end here if you want to do, I just have the free version of Genially. There is a paid pro version, but um, you can make everything that I showed you with just the free version too. And I also did links here to the tumble books that I talk about. That's all I've got. Should we take it back to you, Enid? Awesome, Jen. Thank you so much. So we're back where we started. I just want to say thank you to Laura, Teresa, and Jen for the wonderful examples. Uh, I think what we'll be doing once Summer Refresher is over is post this presentation on the KYVL YouTube channel and then probably gather some samples and post them to the KYVL blog so that you can access them later uh, and save you some time, although you will have to create your own links, uh, except for Tumble Book Library and Teen Book Cloud. If you have questions, you can see all our Twitter accounts, you can reach out uh, through direct messaging, or you can email kybl at ky.gov. We thank you all so much.